named Cassius Clay. Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, uh, rumble, young man, rumble. Ah. Uh. Everybody's talking about Joe Fraser. I want to talk about Joe Fraser. Joe Fraser's ugly. He's a little. Uh, <laughs> I was the biggest Muhammad Ali fan, but I think everybody says that. Um, I used to wince every time he got hit, which was not often um, when he first um, started. Right hand that time, folks. Another one. Sonny Robo. Sonny Robo. Cassius has him hurt. What made him the greatest heavyweight of all time, incidentally, was not boxing skills or even a heavy punch. What made him the greatest fighter of all time was his extraordinary coordination, his speed. And he works over the shoulder of Foreman. He coined the title People's Champion. I'll show you what a real Keep champion is. I'll show you what a real champion is. Take that thing on down. I ain't that heavy. He is the most widely recognized athlete in the history of the world. There's Ali leading the chant. Ali, Ali. In 1960, a few days before the United States Olympic team left for Rome, I invited four American Olympic fighters to have dinner with me at Sugar Ray Robinson's restaurant here on 7th Avenue in Harlem. One of the fighters was Cassius Clay. And in the taxi coming up here, he told me for the first time that he was the greatest. And I believed him. While we were having dinner, Sugar Ray Robinson himself came into the restaurant and sat down and talked to the young fighters. Three of them asked for autographed pictures. And those three, Cassius Clay, Wilbert McClure, and Eddie Crook, all won gold medals in the Olympics. After dinner, I took Cassius Clay out here on 7th Avenue, and he saw two things that impressed him. One was Sugar Ray Robinson's convertible. I think he was in his purple period then. And the other was here on the corner of 125th Street and 7th Avenue. There was a man standing on a soapbox, and he was giving a lecture, the essence of which was, as I recall, buy black, which seems like a very mild message today. But in those days, 18-year-old Cassius Clay from Louisville, Kentucky, thought it was amazing that a black man would stand up and say such things in public. In the Olympic trials, I fought Alan Hudson. That was the biggest fight I had here in the United States. That was for the United States Olympic Championship. And the winners later went on to Rome. And naturally, I was the winner. I went on to Rome and won the world amateur championship. But this fight, particular fight with Alan Hudson, was for the United States Light Heavyweight Golden Gloves Championship. <clears throat> and I knocked him out in the third round. He was a bad, fast left hooker. He was knocking out everybody with left hooks. Wow, I see what you mean. He was about 23 years old. I was 18. But my left jabs were too fast for him. My in and out footwork uh, was too fast for him. And he just couldn't master my speed. Hudson looks as though he's out on his feet. When he went to Rome to compete in the Olympics, if they had an election for a mayor of the Olympic Village, he would have been elected. Everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. 18-year-old kid walking around with a camera, taking pictures of everybody. He goes to Rome in 1960 as a light heavyweight, which is how he fought 175 pounds. He became the most popular and most charismatic character at the Rome Olympics, running backwards against Wilma Rudolph saying he was going to marry her, showing everybody his medal. He was exactly what the new age of TV wanted. He was just an extraordinary fighter. He fought wrong. He pulled back from a punch. That's usually bad. You get hit. But when he pulled back, he pulled back with such lightning speed and with such coordination that he never got hit. And this is what made Ali great, his extraordinary physical skills. Cassius, of your four fights, which one gave you the most trouble? Well, the last fight, the boy from Poland, he was... Petrakowski, I believe, yes, that's he close. Was, he was real determined, and it's hard to beat a guy when you reach the foul bout, because it's hard to beat a guy when he has his mind made up that he wants to win. So, 
Uh, he was the roughest boy, but for the first two rounds, I had a little trouble getting started. Mm -hmm. Did the left hand bother you? He's a left-hander. He was a left-hander. Uh, I was beat last year by Southpaw, the name of Amy Johnson, but I've been training since then, and I've caught on to him. But fast pace. For the first two rounds, I tired him out. The third round, he was, he was mine. A brash 178-pound Cassius Clay accepted the gold medal in the Palazzo dello Sport after defeating Beckus of Belgium, Shatov of the Soviet Union, and Argentina's Tony Madigan, Cassius destroyed Pietras Kowski of Poland in the finals. His vocal antics out of the ring and his flamboyant style in the ring made the native of Louisville an instant celebrity as he returned to a parade held in his honor. You met the champion, Floyd Patterson, I understand. Uh, Floyd, yes, Floyd came by to see me. We had a little talk, but it was a friendly talk, but uh, if possible, I would like to fight him one of these days. So he didn't look at me right, so I didn't look at him right. We were, we were really friendly. When Cassius Clay returned from Rome, the light heavyweight champion of the Olympics, I met him here at what was then called Idlewild Airport. Within five years, both the fighter and the airport had changed their names, from Clay to Ali and from Idlewild to JFK. Imagine the odds you could have gotten on a parlay like that. The night Cassius Clay came home from Rome in the Olympics, we went out to celebrate, of course. He was staying at the Waldorf Towers in an apartment given to him by a Louisville businessman who was hoping to manage him. As I recall, Clay's apartment was halfway between the apartment of General Douglas MacArthur and former President Herbert Hoover, so the young kid from Louisville was in good company. For dinner, we went downstairs to the Bull and Bear, a steakhouse in the Waldorf, and young Clay ordered two complete steak dinners and finished it all. Then we went out on the town. We went to Times Square, and he had a bogus newspaper printed up with the headline, Clay Signs to Fight Patterson. Then we went to Jack Dempsey's restaurant, the restaurant owned by the former heavyweight champion, and, and young Clay had a piece of the famous cheesecake. From there, we went to Birdland, the jazz ha haven, and we went up to the bar, and Clay said to the bartender, I'd like a Coke with a drop of bourbon in it. Of course, being from Louisville, bourbon was probably the only kind of whiskey that he ever heard about. We went downtown to Greenwich Village, we went uptown to Harlem, and everywhere we went, people recognized him and said, there's Cassius Clay. And he was amazed that people recognized him. Of course, his fight, the one for the Olympic championship, had been on television two nights earlier, and a lot of people had seen that. But even better, he was wearing his Olympic blazer with the letters USA about six inches high, and to top that, he had his gold Olympic medal around his neck. He kept that gold medal on for 48 hours after he won it. He even slept with it. October 29, 1960, the pro debut of Cassius Clay. He had signed a six-year deal with 10 Louisville millionaires who would receive 50% of Clay's earnings. Tony Hunsaker would become the first victim of the most charismatic athlete in the history of sports. Weighing only 182 pounds, light for a heavyweight, all Louisville boxing fans turned out to see their young Olympic gold medal winner. He did not disappoint anyone. Supremely confident, young Clay box smartly, easily winning his professional debut with a flashy, unanimous decision. Shortly after Clay turned professional before his first fight, his first professional fight against a West Virginia sheriff named Tunney Hunsaker, I went down to Louisville to visit him. And I was driving down the main street of Louisville. I stopped at a traffic light, and there was a girl standing on the corner, a very pretty girl who happened to be white. And I turned to young Cassius Clay, and I said, boy, she's pretty. And he grabbed me. He said, you crazy man, you can get electrocuted for that. A Jew looking at a white girl in Kentucky. And I knew right then that he was my kind of athlete. When you're active, the last thing you want is the uncomfortable itch of dandruff. Introducing new Head & Shoulders Refresh. It helps prevent dandruff and its refreshing mint formula feels cool and stimulating on the scalp. No regular shampoo can give you hair so refreshed and flake-free. New Head & Shoulders Refresh from the Head & Shoulders family. Our refreshing way to help prevent dandruff. Why do I rent from Enterprise? <laughs> Very simple. No stress. We'll be happy to they arrange to pick me up free, this is great. so I don't have to ask anyone for a ride. See? No stress. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Really? Can you believe the price of popcorn? It's a crime against humanity. Everything costs an arm and a leg. Uh, not everything. You can get all your long distance calls for under a buck. He's talking about 10, 10, 2, 20. Dial it and talk up at 20 minutes for only 99 cents. Very wise for his age. Talk over 20 minutes, then what? Yeah, then what? It's just 10 cents for each extra minute. That's cheap. How is it possible? 
How does popcorn pop? Who cares? Yeah, you just dial 10, 10, 220, and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. Fall back, Sarge. You're moistening my ear. Living heartburn free just got easier. Just keep one of these handy. Pepsid AC Chewables. Minty chewables in their own little wrappers. They go wherever you go to stop heartburn before it starts. What can be easier than that? On the next chap, one-on-one. -on -one. I guess I rubbed some people the wrong way. A controversial player and one of the NBA's top 50 of all time, Rick Barry, his competitive drive. Hey, if I was watching me, I probably wouldn't like me unless I was a fan. His switch to the ABA. There were more people on the bench than the scoring table than there were in the, in the stands. And the sons who followed in his footsteps. You're the number one sire in the history of the NBA. Barry, chap, one-on-one, -on -one, Friday at 6.30, only on ESPN Classic. This is ESPN Classic. They think that I am becoming overconfident, but I will never be so overconfident until it would interfere with my training program. I'm gunning for Floyd Patterson and Sonny Lister. And if they get in my way, I will annihilate them also. I think after his seventh fight, he went to a wrestling bout in Las Vegas, and he saw Gorgeous George. And Gorgeous George was there screaming, if I lose to this man, I'm going to crawl on my belly to Russia. And he looked around and he saw 10,000 people cheering for Gorgeous George's defeat. And Muhammad Ali told me, he said, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. He was a showman. Dicted to win the championship at the age of 21. I'm out to break Floyd Patterson's record. And by this being my 20th birthday today, January the 17th, that leaves me exactly one year to uh, reach my goal to, in order to uh, win this championship. So whoever stands in my path at that time, either Liston or Patterson, one of them will fall. One of the most unique confrontations took place a few months later, but no one realized it. Ingemar Johansson in black trunks, training to fight Floyd Patterson, went three rounds with speedy young Cassius. The upstart youngster, not knowing his proper place, boxed his way around the ring as if it were he using Ingo for a sparring partner. $100,000 cash to meet me in a national televised fight. And um, he turned it he, down. Yes, he said that the fight wouldn't draw free ticket holders and that I didn't have the ability to step in the same ring with him. So I said, well, if I didn't have the ability to fight him and he knew he was going to win and the fight wouldn't draw free ticket holders, well, why don't he come on over here, knock me out, and pick up that $100,000? The first day, I met Clay, it was that day up in Harlem, the day I took him to Harlem, and I think I fell in love with him that day, and I've been in love with him ever since. He was so natural, he was so open, he was so funny. I had never met any 18-year-old kid like him. I had certainly met no athlete like him. He had this image, he had this aura. He was creating it himself. No sneaker company was doing it, no sponsor was doing it. He was doing it, and he was doing it for the sheer joy of it. Every indication has been that you're confident that you can beat Zara. I'm confident I can whip all of them. This ain't nothing new. My image has been confident. We're just trying to make it look like something new for. I'm always confident I can whip all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent mean, if that's good, I'm there. Hello once again, everyone. The name is Howard Cosell. We're waiting the arrival home of young 18-year-old Cassius Marcellus Clay, the young man who at the recent 1960 Rome Olympia, right there, shocked and amused the world with his boxing ability and braggadocio, if you will. Here he is now. He's only 18 years of age. Cassius, do you plan to turn professional? <laughs> Yes, I do, Mr. Cosell. You see, nobody's ever seen nothing like me. I'm so fast. I'm so pretty. I'm so fast I can play ping pong by myself. But I say go, you count. Okay. Go. One, two. That's too slow. You count too slow. <laughs> now, come on, seriously. Okay. I didn't throw no punch that All time. Right. Now, count one, two, fast. Okay. But I say go, count. Go. One, two. You want to see it again? <laughs> it is true that I do a lot of talk, and everything I say, I mean to back it up. And I noticed Archie Moore said that the empty wagon makes the most noise. Well, uh, I don't know too much about that empty wagon, but that old man wouldn't go but four rounds with me. It's November 15th, 1962, and a lightning-fast young heavyweight. Cassius Clay takes on former light heavyweight champion, ageless Archie Moore. 
Here's Clay entering the ring in Los Angeles, California. The good-looking young Clay tests the canvas. Here comes the marvelous gray-haired old man of boxing, Archie Moore, waving to the crowd, shaking hands with Cassius Clay. There's Kirk Douglas in the audience. And world heavyweight champion Sonny Liston takes a bow. Sonny walks across the ring to shake hands with Archie. A 43-year-old Archie Moore in black trunks moves across the ring to take on the dancing master Cassius Clay. Cassius has predicted that he will knock out ageless Archie in four rounds. All of the newspaper people are wondering whether Clay can make his prediction come true. Archie Moore has been a professional fighter since 1936. That makes this the 26th year Archie has been thrilling ring audiences all over the world. Archie holds the all-time knockout record previously held by Young Stribling. 106 professional fighters failed to go the limit with this sharp-punching Archie Moore, a record that seems to be completely out of reach of future professional fighters. Clay moving well, boxing sharply. The brilliant young Cassius Clay won the 1960 National AAU and National Golden Glove heavyweight titles. In addition, he also won the Olympic light heavyweight crown that same year. Since turning professional two years ago, Clay has had 15 fights, winning them all, 12 by knockout. Moore has a sneaky right hand that can take any fighter out of there with one punch. Clay has to be very careful. And there's the end of round one. In round two, Moore is going to have to attempt to corner the endlessly moving young Cassius Clay. seems very confident taking pot shots at Archie Moore. Moore covering up. Moore weighed in at 191 pounds this evening. That's much heavier than the normal weight that Archie fights at. Those are stinging punches by Clay. Archie won the light heavyweight championship in 1952, 10 years ago, when he took a unanimous 15-round decision from champion Joey Maxim in St. Louis. 
Archie has defended the light heavyweight title eight times, of which seven of the challengers were flattened before the finish. A barrage of ripping punches by Clay. And there's the end of round number two. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a Bowflex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a Bowflex machine. You're not going to believe how effective Bowflex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're gonna see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. Kiefer's teacher in school suggested the Hooked on Phonics program for him. Hooked on Phonics really took him to the next step of wanting to be able to read and making it so he could do it. His teacher noticed right away a real difference in his reading. The program made it so he had a good time learning to read. To the shed. No dogs. Hooked on Phonics really did work for us. Call now. See dramatic improvement in just four weeks or your money back. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. <laughs> Every Friday, ESPN unveils a new profile in the countdown of the 50 greatest athletes of the century. This week, The Mick. From the plains of Oklahoma to the badlands of the Bronx, Mickey Mantle etched his name in Yankee history. From his raw country power through his brilliant but injury-plagued career to his untimely death, Mickey Mantle proved his mettle time and again, both on and off the field. Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes, number 37, Mickey Mantle. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN, presented by General Motors. Trailers for sale or rent. Rooms to let 50 cents. Mama, man of means by no means. King of the road. Two hours of Pushing broom buys an eight, twelve, four bedroom. I'm a man of means by no means. When you have it your way, it Get just tastes better. <laughs> Cassius Clay in white trunks seems to have taken over here in round three. Cassius is pot shotting. Young Clay has waded right into the middle of the leading heavyweight contenders by flattening the highly ranked Alex Mitte. Also, fourth ranked Willie Bezmanov failed to go the distance with Clay last year. At the tender age of 20, Cassius Clay is serving notice to heavyweight champion Sonny Liston that there is a new and exciting bolt of lightning in the heavyweight division. It's all clay here in round three. Cassius seems to be playing with Archie. Sharp, stinging punches rock more. Moore's in trouble. Clay pouring it on here in round three.
Cassius seems to have the fight in complete control. And there's the end of round three, a big clay round. And this is the stanza Clay has predicted that he'd knock out Archie. He's been right in all of his predictions prior to this fight. Can Clay do it here in round four? Sharp, stinging punches by Cassius Clay. Clay looking for that opening. Moore pressing forward, trying to get in that one big punch to take Clay out of there. Ripping punches by Clay, and Moore goes down. Cassius raises his hands over his head. Courageously, Archie gets to his feet. Moore is sent to the canvas again by a barrage of punches. For the second time, Archie gets to his feet to face the inevitable. Ripping punches by Cassius Clay, and it's all over. Clay wins by a fourth round knockout, as predicted. It looks like this exciting 20-year-old is on his way to the heavyweight championship. This brilliant young heavyweight is serving notice to Sonny Liston that he thinks he's ready for a title shot. And here he tells the world. This contest will go into the record book as Archie Moore's last fight, bringing down the curtain on one of the most magnificent ring careers of all time. Cassius, uh, you've got to fight this boy Cooper. Uh, you've been playing around for a long time, uh, sporting it, as you yes, say. Yes, I'm not training too hard for this bum. Henry Cooper's nothing to me. Uh, if this bum go over five rounds, I won't return to the United States for 30 days. That's final. Well, Cash, since you're not worried about this guy Cooper, uh, how about when you get through with him? What are your plans after that? Well, uh, you're right. I'm not even worried about this big bum. Uh, Cooper will only be a warm-up until I get to that big, ugly bear, Sonny Liston. Right, bodyguard? Right, right. It's June 18th, 1963. Young Cassius Clay takes on England's Henry Cooper. Let's listen to Harry Carpenter describe the action. So here we go. The fight of the year, Clay from the right-hand corner against Cooper of Britain. And Clay has said, I'll beat him in five. We'll see. A lot of people think that Cooper's big chance is to go in early with his left hook and try and nail Clay. Clay, six foot two and a half. Cooper, six one and a half. Clay really is a fine figure. Clay's face and he's scoring heavily with it and he's hurting the American. A sensational start to this fight. And Cooper right on top with half a minute to go in the first.
Strand has done wonders for British professional boxing. People are on their feet at the ringside now, cheering Cooper. A fantastic start by the British champion. The handsome Cassius Clay coming out for round three after the shock of his life in the first round. The rain has stopped. The excitement has really started among the crowd here who've seen Cooper take the fight to Clay. And these 40 or 50,000 people in Wembley are all on Henry Cooper's side. Cooper's left eye patched up now, still he hooks the right left hand. And now he's cut over the left eye. Henry Cooper is cut over the left eye, and it looks to me like a very bad cut indeed. This is tragedy for Cooper in the third round. With only 40 seconds gone, and Cooper is very badly cut over the left eye. That handsome place of the American Negro, completely unmarked. Cooper trying to nail him in the third if he can. There's no telling how, how long he's got to go, Cooper, with that eye. A minute left in the third. treating Cooper, his arms are down by his hips. Just using his feet to keep away from Cooper. This is complete cheat on the part of Clay, who feels that he's got it in the bag because of that eye. Half a minute to go in the third. Clay has taken all of Cooper's punches and stood up to them. Clay hardly bothering to punch in this round now. He's just threatening and he's teasing Cooper. He's trying to make Cooper look small in the third round. This might be a good time to talk about the Michelin X1. Thanks to Michelin technology, it gives you long mileage and better wet braking than any rain tire. And that should make everyone on a wet road happy. When I take a liquid antacid, I, my, I feel like, ugh. It's like liquid chalk. I'm not crazy about any of them. If you had something that tastes better, I mean, it would be a joy. Introducing new fast-acting Mylanta Supreme. What makes it supreme? Wow. Oh, that's good. I'm not kidding. Very light. Yeah, it tastes like a dessert. It's the only liquid antacid with no chemical preservatives. It doesn't taste like medicine, I'll tell you. No. It's actually helping my indigestion now. Supreme relief. Taste it for yourself. Can I have some more? <laughs> attention McGuire got last year, I got jealous. So this year, I'm going for the record. Maybe instead of the big unit, they'll start calling me the long unit.
Big Fights Boxing Hour gives you access to the largest boxing library in the world. Here's what you can check out in this library. Rare footage of classic fighters, the stories from outside the ring, and volumes of the greatest action in boxing history. Every week, Al Bernstein puts you ringside for classic fights you can't see anywhere else. Ali, Marciano, Leonard, Lewis, plus hard-hitting fighters every boxing fan ought to know. Big Fights Boxing Hour, Tuesday at 10, only on ESPN Classic. This is ESPN Classic. Play completely unmarked. And looking set for victory because of this handicap to Cooper's left eye. Well, they've worked on it. Tommy Little chasing Cooper's seconds out. Round four. the ringside is one of Clay's 11 managers, Bill Faversham, and he called out to Clay in the interval, cut out the funny business and get down to work. So the Clay people are not too happy with their man. He is certainly teasing Cooper in the third. This is not the way to go about things when you're a world heavyweight contender. And Cooper's eye already bleeding again in the fourth round. Above and below, two streams of blood. And poor Cooper keeps putting his left glove up there to that eye as though he can hardly believe his bad luck. fourth round and one looks for a sign that a left hook from Cooper can really hurt this man but apart from the opening minute he hasn't seemed to hurt Clay very much with his back. He's put as many left hooks in as he can get and Clay has taken them all somewhat contemptuously. And now Clay is just jabbing casually with his left hand. here his mind seems to be half away somewhere else he's just treating Cooper almost as a plaything here but that's the sort of chance you can take once too often and if Henry nails him anything might happen
Oh, no, it seems to be all right. And out we come to round five. But now round five is the round in which Clay said he would beat Cooper. But now this crowd at Wembley are beginning to play for a Cooper win. Clay on the floor at the end of the fourth. And now fighting to preserve his professional right here against Henry Cooper. and dramatic ending as young Cassius Clay makes good his prediction of a fifth round KO after coming off the canvas in the fourth. It now appears to everyone that this young fighter is destined to become heavyweight champion of the world. In England, the only thing that happened in England, he tripped over a left hook. <laughs> so when he came back, he was a little dazed, a little bothered, bewildered. And uh, the English guy said that I cut his glove. I don't really didn't cut his glove. It just happened to split just happened at to that split. critical time. At critical time. In other words, uh, I got, uh, I went and I told the referee that the glove was split. And I ran over to Teddy Walter and I said, will you please get us another set of gloves because the glove is split. So uh, Walter went to the back of the arena for another set of gloves and he came back and just consumed about three or four minutes. He said, we don't have another set of gloves. That's okay, we'll use the gloves we got. And I think Troy has got a torn glove. Well, Cassius, how about giving us a description of that Henry Cooper fight over there in England? Oh, that, uh, oh, man, that was really something. He should have been there. I walked into L London, England. I jumped out the airplane. Picture, cameraman, everywhere I go, you can look in the gym today. The TV, the cameraman, everybody follows me. I'm so great. And 55,000 people came that night. Well, my resolutions are to become the youngest heavyweight champion in history. And that's nothing new to my fans. They all know that I will be the next heavyweight champion. Uh, I will be 21 January the 17th. And I predict that by the end of 1963, I will be the youngest heavyweight champion in history. And the only reason I won't be is because this fella, Sonny Liston, would be ducking and dodging me. Hey, man. How come every time I call you, you're on the phone? Who are you talking to? My friends, family. I call them a lot since I don't get to see them that much. <laughs> phone bills must be killing you. Not at all. I dial 10 10 3 2 1. Saves me 50% on calls over 10 minutes. And when you're talking with family and friends, you just know you're going to be on for a while. Sounds good. My wife's on the phone all the time with her sister. Hey, man. Am I ever going to get to shoot? <laughs> Not when you're playing against me. This time of year, I need more than an ordinary eye drop. I need OcuHist. OcuHist Eye Allergy Relief from Visine. It's anti-itching. It's anti-redness. It's antihistamine relief for your eyes. OcuHist's special antihistamine formula stops the itching and relieves eye allergies fast. My eyes feel great. Get OcuHist Eye Allergy Relief from Visine. It gets the itch out. Robin and I are going to Cooperstown together, and nobody's going to care that I got 98% of the vote and you only got 77. Yeah, just like nobody's going to care I won more MVP awards, George. We'll be too busy celebrating with Miller Lite, which tastes great because it's so smooth. Well, I think it tastes great because of the choice hot. Are you sure about that, Robin? Yeah, I'm sure. 98% sure or just 77% sure? <laughs> Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. That MVP thing's killing you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Only ESPN Classic lets you pick what you want to watch Sunday nights. Just log on to ESPN.com on the Go Network and vote for the week's classic click and pick event. This week, click Choice 1 to see Bernie Perron fend off Bobby Orr's Bruins in the Flyers 74 bid for the Stanley Cup. Click Choice 2 to see the birth of a new hockey hero when the Flyers tangle with the Islanders in an overtime thriller. Log on for even more classic click and pick choices. Then, tune in to ESPN Classic next Sunday at 7 to see if your pick is the classic click and pick of the week. It's only on ESPN Classic. 
This is ESPN Classic. Clay comes out to meet Liston, and Liston starts to retreat. If Liston goes back in his father, he'll end up in the ringside seat. Well, Al Lee was campaigning for a fight against Liston. He would come up with his bus in front of his door in Denver, Colorado. In the middle of the night, bang on his door, I want you, big ugly bear. And Liston didn't know what to do with this. He just wanted to kill him. I mean, you're talking about an ex-thug, an enforcer, a goon, who used to crack eggs and heads the same way. And he's got this kid jumping up and down on his front lawn. Every time he picked up a newspaper to read it, there was Cassius Clay challenging him. Early in Clay's professional career, he came to New York one time with his mother, his father, and his brother Rudy, and we all went out to dinner, and after dinner, I was driving them around New York, driving Clay's new car, a, a Cadillac convertible. We drove downtown on 2nd Avenue. It was snowing, and it was kind of ugly out, and the car was low on gas. So I pulled into a gas station to get it filled up, and the attendant came over, and he was a black man, very large, maybe 6'5", 6'6", maybe 250, 260, and I said, please fill it up, and he said, fine, and he started to fill it up, and I asked him if he would clean off the windshield, and he began cleaning off the windshield, which had snow and rain on it and, and New York City dirt, and he was taking his time and taking his time and taking his time, and finally I turned to Cassius Clay, who was sitting next to me, and I said, tell him that's good enough and we'll go. So Clay leans out the window and he says to the guy, that's good enough, we're going to go. And the guy looks at him and sort of scowls and says, who's doing this, me or you? And Clay pulls back and says, you're the boss, you're the boss. And I turned to Cassius and I said, hey, you've been telling me for weeks that you're the greatest. How can you let this guy in a gas station tell you what to do? And Clay looked at me and said, man, he looks like Sonny Liston. I mean, Ollie had probably the best sense of self-promotion of anybody that ever lived. The guy was a brilliant promoter. He knew... I mean, he knew that every time he posed for me, he had a very good chance of being on the cover of the magazine. And that sold fight tickets, and that, that's what the business is about. I'm only bold and cocky before and after fight. Let me see you close your mouth and just keep it closed. Well, you know that's impossible. No, 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 keep it closed. You know that's impossible. I'm the greatest. And I'm knocking out all bones. And if you get too small, I'll knock you out. Now close your mouth, but just let me see if you can leave it closed for 10 seconds. Well, that's impossible. Outside of Babe Ruth, I don't know anybody that's promoted themselves better, uh, continu more continually, than, than Cassius Clay and then Muhammad Ali. I do notice a lot of press releases and radio statements and TV announcements are complaining about I talk too much and I'm cocky and I need a good beat. He spoke in sound bites. He was amazing. Heavyweight champion Sonny Liston, already being compared with all-time greats Jack Dempsey and Joe Lewis, goes into training to dispense with the Louisville Lip. Liston's an 8-to-1 favorite, and many experts think that's giving Clay the benefit of the doubt. On the punching bag, Clay likes to vary his rhythm. is like a machine. He never misses a beat. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. You might be young and handsome, but you won't be after I finish with you. If you like to lose your money, be a fool and bet on Sonny. I'm pretty sure people's not a fool to bet on you. They have to be a fool and bet on me. You're 40 years old if a day, and you don't belong in the ring with Cash of Clay. No, I shouldn't, because it'd be a disgrace to see the people, let the people see me kill you like I am. The odds should be three and a half to one that you won't show up for the fight. The odds should be ten to nothing that you don't last for the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cassius Marcellus Clay. He's young, he's handsome. They know it. He's a poet, a prophet. And many people believe he'll be the next heavyweight champion of the world. Cassius, can I ask you how you're feeling now at this point in your career? I'm feeling great. I'm ready to go to war right now. Well, when you say you're ready to go to war right if now... I see that bear on the street, I beat him before the fight. You'd actually take him on before the fight? Beat him like I'm his daddy. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Cassius. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> he He's too ugly to be the world's champ. The world's champ should be pretty like me. 
Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sunday. Oh, uh, may I ask you because this? Because I'll never lose a fight. It's impossible. Tell him. It's impossible. Never lost a fight in your life. Ask any of my fans when was the last time they lost. I'm too fast. Champion from I'm the, the crib. I'm the king. Born to tell. Born to champ from the crib. Ah! I'm not only a fighter. I'm a poet. I'm a prophet. I'm the resurrector. I'm the savior of the boxing world. If it wasn't for me, the game would be dead. What percentage of the fans who are coming to see you fight Sonny Liston, what percentage of the fans do you feel will be coming to see him, and what percentage do you feel will be coming to see you? Well, 100% will be coming to see me, but 99% will be coming to see me get beat. Do you really feel that Because they think I talk too much. But well, I got these. And they represent your thinking? These represent dynamite. There he is. <laughs> An unheard of thing happened at the Main Street Gym in Miami. Challenger Cassius invaded while Liston was training. Clay's bravado was never more evident, but Liston was not an appreciative audience. Sonny had to be restrained to protect Clay, supposedly. My New Year's revolution is to knock out that big ugly bear shake up the whole world in 1964 and talk no more. Now, will you please do us one favor and wish, uh, look right into the camera and wish Sonny Liston a very, very happy new year. Yeah, I wish him a happy new year because he's going to need happiness after I annihilate him because he's going to be, I'm going to beat him so bad, he's going to think he robbed the bank. And I'm getting tired of talking. Is this going to call for a new contract uh, signing? I don't know what it's going to call. I'm just ready to fight, and I'm glad it'll be here with all these big mouth people here in Miami talking about I talk too much, and this one's gonna whoop me. Well, I want all of them to be there, and I'm gonna shut up all of his mouth. For those of you who won't be able to see the Clay Liston fight, here's the eighth round exactly as it will happen. He was writing doggerel and writing poetry to promote his fights. Some of the poems were pretty dreadful, but it didn't make any difference. He had fun doing it. Everything you talked to him about was fun. Clay comes out to meet Liston, and Liston starts to retreat. If Liston goes back in his father, he'll end up in the ringside seat. Clay swings with his left. Clay swings with his right. Look at young Cassius carry the fight. Liston keeps back in, but there's not enough room. It's a matter of time, and Clay lowers the boom. Now Liston disappears from view. The crowd is getting frantic, but our radar stations have picked him up. He is somewhere over the Atlantic. Listen to Seal rising, and the ref rises a frown, for he can't start counting till Sonny comes down. Who would have thought when they came to the fight that they had witnessed the launching of a human satellite? Yes, the crowd did not dream when they put down their money that they would see a total eclipse of the Sunny. Shave it off, all of it, just... <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just this dandruff. It goes away, comes back, goes away, comes back. Well, we can take care of that. Head and shoulders? With regular shampoo, flakes can keep coming back. But head and shoulders helps prevent flakes before they start. You may never see flakes again. And your hair looks great. Glad I didn't do something stupid like shave my head. Head and shoulders changes dandruff problems into beautiful hair. When you or someone you love is hospitalized, safety matters most. That's why doctors and hospitals choose Tylenol more than any other pain reliever. Doctors know Tylenol is least likely to have drug interactions, and it won't cause stomach irritation the way aspirin and even ibuprofen sometimes can. It's the pain reliever hospitals use most. Tylenol. Take comfort in our strength. After 1999, there will not be any more sports in this century. 
so be sure you get the best of it. Call for ESPN the magazine now. ESPN the magazine is big, bigger in size, with unbelievable photos, interviews that'll surprise you, and your favorite ESPN personalities in every issue. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. And better yet, you'll get this official ESPN the magazine polo shirt. Absolutely free. So call now. Tonight on ESPN Classic, at 7, find out what classic game you voted for on Classic Click and Pick. Then at 9, it's the 1986 U.S. Open on Sunday Drives. Tonight, only on ESPN Classic. This is ESPN Classic. It was a sad moment when I looked at Joe Lewis defeated in his corner and looking down into the crowd and watching his fans cheer him, still cheer him wildly. Seeing the great Joe Lewis defeated, ending up his career that way, I think at that moment it might have influenced me in retiring maybe a year before I would. down here. Instead of running out for stamps, shouldn't you be running your business? Imagine a simpler way. Get the personal post postage meter from Pitney Bowes. Send mail without ever going out for stamps. Just weigh, punch in the postage, and voila. Professionally metered mail and no wasted postage. You can also add a personal message to get your mail noticed. And postage refills by phone in 30 seconds, day or night. Now listen up, because here's what you'll get. Besides a lot more time. You'll get the postage meter and money-saving electronic scale. So there's no wasted postage. For a 90-day free trial. Free is good. You'll also get the mail marketer software. Create really nifty direct mail to help your business grow. Call now for your 90-day free trial, and you'll also get our mail marketer software absolutely free. Now I'll watch your business grow. Hey, I look good in red. The personal post postage meter from Pitney Bowes. <laughs> Who else? Yeah! Giggle Wiggle gives you giga gallons of giggle. Oh, excuse me, did you say gallons of giggles? Gallons of giggles! Giggle Wiggle's durable soft foam wigglers. Safely wiggle water everywhere. Gallons of giggles. Get <laughs> giga gallons of giggles. Finally, a sprinkler that even the smallest gigglers can enjoy. You must be 18 or older to order. Call the number on your screen to order Giggle Wiggle from the people who brought you the fanoodle. Thanks, Kid Power. For 20 points, can you name the greatest, grooviest swing in a 70s sports quiz show ever? Would you like to try a guess? Tony Massa said. Every weeknight from 7 to 8, ESPN Classic has got all the right answers. It's Sports Challenge. See the hippest, most happening athletes as they compete in the ultimate contest of mental conquest. If you've got a need for knowledge, check the facts on Sports Challenge. Every weeknight from 7 to 8, only on ESPN Classic. Are you old school? Hi, I'm old school pitcher Tom Seaver, and this is ESPN Classic. The Mets have won the championship, and we got the greatest bunch of guys you've ever seen, and we're just a bunch of young kids that love to play this game. It's terrific. Now that's old school. This is ESPN Classic. This is ESPN Classic. February 25th, 1964. Cassius Clay boasted that Sonny Liston would fall in eight. The challenger was hysterical at the weigh-in, and doctors recorded Clay's pulse at double his normal rate. Amidst a rash of death threats because of his association with Muslims, Clay set out to claim the heavyweight championship. Meet at the weigh-in, and here comes Ali jumping and screaming and hollering with Badini Brown and Youngblood and Dundee and everybody float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And he's jumping up and down, and they're taking blood tests of him, and they concur that all the doctors, that his blood pressure's off the wall, that he's going to, uh, he's scared, he's going to pull out of the fight. The papers started covering it that way. 
Man, I'm, I don't get hit. I'm the fastest thing on two feet, man. Are you crazy? I'm tired of talking. Right, listen, the champion just made an offer. A hundred dollars around the spar with him. And you can only, and you can get in shape besides. Well, I'll make a better offer than that. I don't fight the champ for nothing. I must tell you that Liston took Ollie totally unseriously. He thought Ollie had no chance against him. He had seen Ollie fight. He thought Ollie was a joke. In fact, he actually told people it's a joke. He didn't train for the fight. Liston, meanwhile, who had been in prison, scared of crazy people. He could handle anybody, but not crazy people. He'd been in the stern. He'd seen crazy people. And Clay, then his name, struck him as a crazy person. He didn't know how to handle it. You tell this to your camera, your TV man, your radio man, and you right there in the whole world. If Sonny Lister looks me, I'll kiss his feet in the rain. I'm not out of the rain on my knees. Tell him he's the greatest and catch the next jet out of the country. That's what I think mean about that. Now well, we see the spotlight on the world champion, Sonny Liston, in his entourage, leading him down from dressing room to ring. A long walk down. Sonny with that hooded robe, the terry cloth white robe, uh, is being led by his advisor, Jack Nylon, Willie Reddish, Teddy King, and uh, some of the others in the group. Let's see what kind of hand he gets as he gets near the ring. Now he's near that, uh, well, let's call it the golden circle. The golden circle, ladies and gentlemen, is the one in front of, he's walking directly behind it now, in front of the $50, $100, and then the auxiliary press, then the $150 section, and finally, Sonny keeps going toward that, what is the $200 per copy, seat per copy section. Now he's heading into the golden circle. Of course, uh, leading the way, some of his very, very close friends uh, coming in there. Sonny gives you that, uh, well, that great look, and there he comes up the ring stairs, Teddy King, first man through, the heavyweight champion with ropes being spread apart, bounces in, Calm, cool, collected, and at the present time, both fighters are in over in the opposite corner of Sonny. Listen, uh, we see at this point the challenger. The challenger catches Marcellus Clay, 22 years of age, unbeaten, 19 straight, going for all the marbles in the boxing business. And right now, to the dapper ring announcer who'll introduce some of the celebrities, the colorful Frank Freeman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Miami Beach, Florida, Miami Beach Convention Hall. While we're here, may I introduce you to a couple of boxers you've seen in the past, we'll probably see again in the future. The contender and former welterweight champion of the world, Louis Manuel Rodriguez. And from North Miami Beach, right here in Florida, the light heavyweight champion of the world, the dancing master, Willie Pastrano. Willie P. Willie Pastrano, who boxes an awful lot like Cassius Clay. And here's a heavyweight on the comeback trail. Five KOs in a row, gunning for a title shot, the popular Californian, Eddie Machen. Eddie, punching better than ever, doing exceptionally well. And real close to ringside, ladies and gentlemen, a man who has been acclaimed as the greatest fighter, pound for pound, three-time middleweight champion, Sugar Ray Robinson. You know what this spectacle is? You've seen it before. Ray with a, a, a great uh, tuxedo sort of suit on. Looks great. Looks perhaps younger than he's looked in a long time. Congratulated and wished Clay lots of luck. Did the same with Sonny. Says hello to the referee and now the announcer. And doing, doing the commentary over television for theater, network, television, Probably one of the most beloved boxers of all time defended his title 25 times in his nine years as heavyweight champion, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis. Lewis. My colleague tonight, my broadcast partner, got a great hand, and why not? An all-time great. And on the other side of the ring, doing his bit, 
for ABC Radio, the undefeated retired heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. Marciano. Rocky, very popular in the Southland, popular all over the country, unbeaten, untied. Back to the ring announcer. This bout is under the auspices of veterans of foreign wars, post number 3559. The officials assigned the doctor, the chief medical examiner, Dr. Alexander Robin. The timekeeper is Gus Reno accounting for the knockdowns, Scotty Lang. Judging, Gus Jacobson. Bunny Lovett. And the referee, Barney Felix. This bout, 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. The challenger from Louisville, Kentucky, wearing white trunks with red stripes, weighing 210 and one half pounds, the former Olympic light heavyweight champion, Cassius Clay. Clay. And his opponent from Denver, Colorado, weighing 218 pounds, wearing the black trunks with the white trim, the heavyweight champion of the world, Charles Sonny Liston. Angelo Dundee Liston. had told him, beware of Liston and his stare down when you come to the center of the ring. Liston used to try to intimidate people. He would stare at people malevolently. The event of a Ali knew this. Dundee said, stand up tall and let him see that you're taller than he is, because Clay was six feet, three inches plus. And Liston always had trouble with taller men. So he stands up erect, never looks in Liston's eyes as Liston gives him this baleful stare, sort of the intimidator's intimidation, and goes back to his corner. He's gotten through the first hurdle at the weigh-in. He's gotten through the second hurdle. And he even admitted later, I was scared, but there's nowhere I could go. I was in the ring. And so he goes back to his corner. Cassius Clay on the move, as we see, looking to get Sonny to run, carrying his left hand dangerously low. Note that the champion, Liston, the aggressive man, Ooh. a good heavy shot dug under the heart. Sonny has to set the pace. That's the way it looks at the outset. Cassius, awkwardly fast. Good long left lead that might keep the champion a bit off balance. Very slippery. Play still in the danger zone in that he's keeping his hands low, but you'll notice one thing if you don't mind, he's at long range with the hands low. We're halfway through round one. range if we look closely although Barney Felix does want them apart at this point because the hands were tied Sonny will be the guy that will keep mauling away one minute more in the first round Sonny seems to be trying to slip those left leads can't do it too successfully because 
The challenger is jabbing all over body and then right hand. The best punch in the fight so far. down to the closing second of this first round and the long left lead is making the difference so far by Mr. Clay. gentlemen, we're looking in with our overhead camera into the corner of Cassius Clay, who is still doing the talking. He's still, he's breathing a bit hard. Barney Felix, the referee, did not stop that round when that bell sounded. Perhaps the referee didn't hear it. Champion Joe Lewis. Going, look at the guy yawning. Tell us what you think at the end of one. Well, Steve, I think this was the greatest round of any, of any fight we've seen in a long time, because I think Clay, I completely hot class on this in this round. Completely outclassed, Joe, with his speed, his awkward style, his boxing, his natural ability. What did it, in your opinion? Well, uh, I hope that Clay don't get too much confidence. If he do, then he's going he gonna, he gonna to get knocked out. Joe referred to overconfidence. This can happen. is actually not headhunting at this point. He's content to rip toward the body, trying to bring the guard down and then go upstairs. You know, when the body goes, the head follows. Watch out. But this youngster, has his own style and it's confusing for the champion to fathom this early in the fight, at least up to now. Halfway through the second round. Closely, the champion is clubbing away, and then, of course, the challenger has to move him away. Less than one minute more in the second round. With 30 seconds to go in the second round, Liston wants to pump that jab to set up his other punches. He wants to use it as a left lead, a lead to other shots if he can get this kid to stand still and then rip the body. Ten seconds more in the second round. The crowd's gonna roar in a few more seconds, that's for sure.
This time of year, I need Ocuhist. Ocuhist Eye Allergy Relief. It's anti-itching, anti-redness, antihistamine relief for your eyes. So it relieves eye allergies fast. My eyes feel great. Ocuhist from Visine. It gets the itch out. Don't worry, little one. Daddy's got Tylenol for his headache. Tylenol works on headache pain without the risk of stomach irritation. So before you know it, Daddy's going to be right as rain. The 1999 Mazda Miata. Set it free, and it'll return the favor. If you want to see the greatest uncut fights of all time, you've got to watch ESPN Classic. Now experience boxing's most unique show, an exclusive look inside the ring with a champ, Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar, Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray's Hit Parade. He'll take you through historic battles and give you the inside story behind every hook, jab, and knockout from fights that are totally uncut. Sugar Ray's Hit Parade, Tuesday at 9, only on ESPN Classic. So close to the action, you got to duck. Are you old school? This is ESPN Classic. Moving, moving on over to the champion's corner, Sonny Liston, Joe, Joe Lewis. Tell us now what they might be telling Sonny. How will he have to fight in round three? Well, I, I'm sure that, that uh, Willie Red is telling Sonny to forget about uh, catching his head because, you know, he, he pulled back too much and, and it's much too fast for that. But I think Sonny can work on the body for a while. The old thing, you know, kill the body, the head to die. In the first and second round, he threw a right hand very hard and he threw his shoulder out. And from that point on, he, he felt pain every time he threw a punch. And he was beating up. Yo. Well, I think Sonny uh, right now it looks like that. This last round, I think, it made him a little bit more t t intense because uh, the first round, I think, he this play really uh, showed a lot of, lot of moves and a lot of what he could do, you know? All right. We're getting set. Thank you, Joe. We're getting set now for round number three. Listen and play. <laughs> Another jarring right hand that time, folks. Another one. Sonny Robble. Sonny Robble. Marcus has him hurt. Sonny is, no, no, is, is talking to... Sonny has a big mouth below his left eye. He has a cut below the eye, and he's getting hit with all the punches in the book. Five seconds remaining in round three. Hold the phone. Cassius is a bit hurt. Sunny, still aggressive, very durable. Seven or 
eight seconds more in the third. What do Cub Cadet tractors dream about? Leveling everything in sight. When you've got a tough job, get a tough tractor. Cub Cadet. With a solid steel drive shaft, welded steel frame, and cast iron front axle. Backed by a five-year limited warranty. Call now and you'll get 0% financing for 12 months. Cub Cadets work harder, so you don't have to. With features like hydraulic lift, power steering with tilt, and cruise control. Not to mention a major appetite. It's Cub Tough. Cub Cadet. Call now for information on the complete line of Cub Cadets. And get 0% financing for the next 12 months. Cub Cadet. American made. American owned. I realized that Bailey was getting a little frustrated with his homework, especially his reading. The best program I have found for parents to use with their child is Hooked on Phonics because the parent can pick it up and they can use it immediately. Within just a couple of weeks, we were definitely seeing an improvement in him. It's as if the light bulb went on in the child's head. Hooked on Phonics works. Call to order Hooked on Phonics. Must be 18 or older. See improvement in just four weeks or your money back. And with your paid order, get the Start Right CD-ROM free. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. On the next Shaft One-on-One, a college career that made history and one of the NBA's 50 greatest players, Bill Walton. You're the only big man I can think of who's known as a passer, as a field general, as a quarterback. From the legends who inspired him. I just love the way Russell did whatever it took to win. To the coaches that pushed him to the top. The real skill that John Wooden had was in developing you as a person. Walton, Shaft One-on-One, tomorrow at 6.30, only on ESPN Classic. I got the chance to live my dreams. These hands have been trusted with many a small head. Hey, come on in. Arthritis will not change that. Who's the big boy? Presenting Tylenol Arthritis Extended Relief. It lasts up to twice as long as regular aspirin without irritating your stomach. So you're in very good hands. You know, you're a lot better in the barber chair than your dad was. Tylenol Arthritis. Take comfort in our strength. This is ESPN Classic. With our overhead camera, or with our creepy peepy camera, right in sight, we're going into Sonny's corner. Joe, I don't know whether you can see it. Look closely, look hard. They're working on the cut below the left eye. It's very difficult to get a shot, but what do you think Sonny's condition, as Joe Polino works on the cut, would be right now? Well, uh, Steve, uh, that round looked bad for Sonny, especially when he was putting all, the, all that flurries on Sonny. But I think the last uh, minute of the round, I think Sonny looked very pretty good. One pointed question. One pointed question with regard to the other fella, fella called Cassius Clay, now that we get set for round four. Uh, do you think Cassius tired a bit, or what happened a bit toward that last minute of the round? That's hard to say. That's hard to say. But, but Sonny did. But Clay did talk to Sonny. I'd like to point out, the champion is strong, durable, takes the good shot. However, he is being outmaneuvered at most points because this fella has that awkwardly fast style of going side to side, moving the upper part of his body.
minute 25 seconds to go in the fourth round. Sonny has some puffiness below his right eye now. Sonny Liston believed in doing anything to win. There is precedent against both Eddie Machen, who claimed he couldn't see for the last four rounds, and Cleveland Williams, who claimed he was blinded, round. that Liston used liniment on his gloves to blind other men. Point, Be that what it may, play, middle of the fourth round, Clay is now having trouble seeing. Starts wiping at his eyes. Goes back to his corner between the fourth and fifth round. I can't see. I can't see. Cut off my gloves. I'm getting out of here. Angelo Dundee puts him down on his stool. Well, I think I think he was completely uh, frustrated. Uh, this had never happened to him before. Here's the guy that uh, all of a sudden he's, he's handling the fight. He's winning it easy. All of a sudden he can't see. So what he did, he uh, came back to the corner and he says, cut the gloves off. But this was frustration. So I said, no, man, this is the Big Apple. We don't cut no gloves off. This is the title. Uh, sit down. So I sat him down, and I started cleaning out his eyes. He did have something in his eyes, definitely, because I got the pinky in my little finger, and I put it into my eye, and it burned like crazy. Picked him up out of the chair and pointed him in the other direction. And I gave him one instruction, run. Puts his mouthpiece in as Barney Felix, the referee, comes over and shoves him out in the middle of the ring. Go get him, kid. This is your fight. This is your big moment. Dundee says that he never saw the fifth round, or at least the beginning of it, because at that point, somebody ran over and pointed out that the black Muslims were standing there thinking that he had done something to Clay's eyes. He was Italian. Their minds said that Liston was in with the mob where he'd formerly been a strike breaker and an enforcer. He had done something. So he's there showing him towels and buckets and everything else to show him he didn't put anything in his eyes. Guys are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner. Something got in his right eye. Uh, however, he's blinking badly. Sonny's gonna try to pull it on. One minute to go, number five. Twenty-four seconds remaining in the fifth.
Only 10 seconds remaining as Sonny still moving in. Cash is still bouncing punches away, blocking them. Introducing new Head & Shoulders Refresh. It helps prevent dandruff, and its refreshing new formula feels cool and stimulating on the scalp. No regular shampoo can give you hair so refreshed and flake-free. New Head & Shoulders Refresh from the Head & Shoulders family. Our refreshing way to help prevent dandruff. Friday, ESPN unveils a new profile in the countdown of the 50 greatest athletes of the century. This week, The Mick. From the plains of Oklahoma to the badlands of the Bronx, Mickey Mantle etched his name in Yankee history. From his raw country power through his brilliant but injury-plagued career to his untimely death, Mickey Mantle proved his mettle time and again, both on and off the field. Sports Century's 50 greatest athletes. Number 37, Mickey Mantle. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. This is ESPN Classic. In round six, we note that Sonny Blackfooted stands most of the time. Easy target. Easy. Play with a variety of punches. We call them combinations. Putting punches together. That's his strong point. We're in the middle of round number six. Cassius Slay still with the faster hands and the better legs, or at least the faster legs. I'll correct myself on that one. Sonny does have sturdy legs. With slightly less than a minute more in the sixth round, the champion has slowed down a bit. The tempo has slowed in the fight. A 
Only 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Sonny can't seem to slip or knock down that jab effectively. Cassius, Cassius throws it from all angles. Very tricky left lead, left jab. Seconds remaining in the sixth. At the end of the round, Clay's eyes start to clear. The crowd now cheering the challenger. Let's get over to our champion, Joe Lewis. Joe, looking in toward the champion's corner. He's still standing up. They're going to make him sit down. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think Sonny now is beginning to worry now. At least his corner is beginning to worry now because I, I think that they feel now that, that Clay have all the comfort that he needs to go home to beat the defeat of Sonny. So I think that the corner now is beginning to worry a little bit now. Now they're working, as we note, with our camera shots in there below the left eye. They've already worked below the right eye. There you see them. Joe Polino trying to keep that cut closed. Uh, do you feel as though Sonny being busted up a little bit, puffed up a little bit around the face. Will this make a difference in Liston's thinking? Well, it has to make a, little, uh, a difference because Liston now, I think he, he don't see too well out like both his eyes now because they're pretty well puffed out. And I think Clay got all the comfort he need now. So I think that he, he can't him go on winning now. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. End of the sixth round. Liston sits on a stool, dejected. If you look at him, his face is swollen. He's already taken a huge beating, the worst beating he had ever taken in his entire career. From the day he started to that moment, he had never been beaten up by anybody the way Ali beaten him up. He just decided he could continue. Later, he claims it was his left shoulder that hurt, but that was the only hand he had used the whole fight. Point of fact, Liston had gotten very old. Styles make fights. He couldn't catch Clay. He couldn't hit him. And between the sixth and seventh round, had quit in his corner. The first time this had ever happened in heavyweight history. And to this day, it's still in our mind's eye a question why. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Did he give up? Was the fix in which everybody said? And of course, boxing writers are the most cynical. with Joe Lewis, and we're going to call the referee over Barney Felix. Joe, what did it? The Sonny Liston, what happened? Well, uh, I didn't want to talk to Sonny, and Sonny said that... Come he here, Cassius. Cassius, the left shoulder. Do us a favor now. You're an ace reporter. Get over and see if we can get Sonny over here. Get him over if you got that. I just talked to Sonny. He said that the doctor won't let him come over. Well, that's right. Try it again. Try to get him if you can. Meanwhile, Barney Felix is the referee. Barney Felix Barney, uh, you stop the fight at the end of six. That recorded as a seventh round knockout. Cassius Clay had beaten the invincible Sonny Liston and cut him up. Nobody had ever done that. And had proven that he was the greatest. I'm the greatest thing that ever lived. Now, wait, wait, I don't have it. Now, hold it. Move over, Joe. Yo, get on the hold it, hold it. Bedlam breaking out. Bedlam busting out here. Oh, great. I don't have a mark on my face. Yeah. And I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Now, I told the world. I talk to God every day. If God's with me, can't nobody be against me, Sonny. I shook up the world. Uh, I know God. I know Cassius. the real God. Cassius, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Cassius. Yes. Let me ask you this now. You told me when you visited in Los Angeles, you could do it in eight. Well, you thought Sonny and figured Sonny was great. How I come you did it in six or seven? I, you I, did it in seven. I had him going in eighth. I was getting ready to take him in the eighth, as you could see. But the man stopped it just to keep from making me look so great. Right. I see. Now, give us that poetry on number seven. He wanted to go to heaven, so I took him in seven. You took him in seven. I am the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold I'm it. I'm pretty. Hold it. You're not that pretty. I'm baby. a bad man. Wait, wait. I took up the world. I shook up the world. Oh, uh, Joe, I shook up the world. Oh, wait a minute, Cash. Wait a minute. You it. must listen to me. Now listen. I to am big double. All right, hold it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you this. I can't be beat, beat. Joe. Uh, wait, hold it. Hold it. They're going to champ, but I don't think so. I 
All right, tell us this. All right, Cash. Thank you. Thank you. Cash is playing the heavyweight champion. Let's get our champion, Joe Lewis, over here as the camera follows Cash's play. Joe, what did it? His shoulder went out. Give us the analysis well, there. As you know, I said that I think Clay getting all the confidence in the world after the end of the sixth round. I think he had all the confidence to go ahead and defeat them, like I just said. But the doctor stopped kind of left. I told the doctor stopped it. All kind of, kind of left arm was thrown out of whack. All right, I'm still. I still think that started. That Clay probably could still beat something because he had too much confidence. So. All right, he had too much confidence there. Lifting Clay up. Where is he making that speech? Over in the neutral corner. Over in the neutral corner. Get him back here. Or get him over there if you can. He's throwing kisses to everybody. Cassius Clay is standing there amidst his followers. And at this point, we'll get uh, somewhere over and find out. Angelo Dundee. Angelo, the manager of the world heavyweight champion. The manager on record, Angelo Dundee, who along with Bill Fabersham and the 10 other Louisville gentlemen who had him, the Louisville sponsoring group. Wait a second, Angelo. He's still on microphone. We're trying to get somebody to you, ladies and gentlemen. All we can say at this point, as we look into the into the face of Cassius Clay, let's get Angelo Dundee, the manager, and at one time, bring him over here, back, bring him back. You got the heavyweight champion, you got the light heavyweight champion. Did you think after one, two, three, four, five, or six that you had it wrapped up? Lead pipe cinch, I knew he was going to knock the guy out, Steve. I, but I thought he was going to knock him out 11 or 12. And he was going to the point, see? All right, lead pipe cinch, you call it. That's right. And, and tell me this, what are his plans? Would he, feed, would he fight a guy in the top six, say like an Eddie Machen, for example? Fight anybody. He'll be a fighting heavyweight champ. It's the best thing that happened to boxing. All right. When you say the best thing, why? Why do you give us because that story? This guy gives us a lot of zets in boxing. Keeps people talking boxing. What do we want? We need people like that in boxing. It's Some a fresh young kid that we need. And this kid's done a lot for boxing. I'm thrilled to be with him. Well, you certainly have done a good job of teaching him, schooling him. Now, do you think that Liston, or will you give Liston a return fight? Well, that's up to Bill Fabsham. I feel there'll be no problem. I feel they'll get together if the money's right. No problem if the money's right. What are you, he's still making speeches over there. Maybe Joe is getting him on his mic. At least I hope he is. Angelo, thank you. Now we're getting him back. Come over here. Come over here now again, Cassius. Ann's just said you perhaps would give Sonny, if Bill Fabersham, and you say okay, a return shot. If the man dreamed before him twice, he would apologize. He would apologize. He would apologize. All right, now, Cassius. There was no match. I want the world to know. I'm so great until Sonny Liston was not even a match. I don't have a mark on my face. In the fifth round, he had liniment in his head. He had liniment in his gloves. And I couldn't do nothing but hold him and duck. Now, hold it, y'all. Uh, Cassius, you said, my eyes was burning. Why? Right. Right. We thought that maybe Ange or one of your cornermen put some stuff in the, on the no. towel by mistake. The man, the man's trainers are dirty. He the had gloves. Are dirty. He had liniment. He had a in his head. Did he stick you with his thumb? Is that yeah. what you're trying to say? My whole face is burning. Your face was burning. Still burning. I, I whooped him. I whooped him. I, I, he couldn't even hurt me. He couldn't and even hurt you. I must admit, that right. was the prettiest uh, thing that ever hold lived. Hold it. Here's a guy. I just took up the word. Joe, Lewis. Joe, come it. on in and ask. I won't ask, ask Cassius. Joe, tell, tell Cassius about the injury that oh, Sonny suffered. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No excuse. No, a, open no, eye. No, no, no excuse. Joe, tell him. It was a big cut eye. Go ahead, Joe. Doctor, tell him. It wasn't a cut eye. The doctor said he pulled his, his left arm out of, out of, out of, out of the yeah. socket. Swinging so, and nothing. Who wouldn't? Also got it, it, it he also wasn't doing nothing. Sam hand. Cook. Hey, let that man up here. He'll be up. No, wait. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it now. Let that man up. He's Sam coming Cook. up. He's coming up. Let that man up. He's coming up. Now, listen, Cassius. Cassius, hold it. This is Sam Cook. Joe, we see him. Joe, ask Cassius. Ask Cassius another question. Let Sam in. This is the right thing. One of, all right, listen, shoulder went out. Cook. Sam Cook, a uh, very good friend, a good vocalist with, with Cash. Excuse me. We both move back. back. Move back, if you will. Thank you. Take up the world. Now, now he's got a cue. His arm was out. Lewis is talking. Hold it, hold it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, but hold it. What happened? He left shoulder in his corner. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, stop. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sonny Lipton doctor stopped the fight because he told the left. Steve Ellis, Steve Ellis, I, I want to tell the people out here. Steve Ellis said that I would get Lipton, and Steve Ellis, I also told Steve Ellis that I would get him in the seventh. Steve Ellis. Didn't I say you dead? You said seventh. I didn't tell the press. You kept your word. I told to him me. I'd get him in seventh. In but your the world didn't hear before the fight. Just you before said the fight. Seven. I said I'd get him in seventh. Steve Ellis heard it. Thank you very much. He did tell me that, ladies and gentlemen. He gave me the insight on that, and I gave it to Joe. 
Joe, uh, Joe, tell me this now. What will happen if they go back again? I think it's deserving of a return go. Well, it will be. It will, I think they have a return go, but I like to tell the people and, and all the people over the world and, and, and in, uh, in Europe and Canada, the yes. fight will stop. Uh, Sonny Lipton boxing stopped the fight because Sonny had sold his left, left shoulder out, out of the socket. Out of the socket. Yeah. Champ, um, did this ever happen to you when you were in the ring? Never did, of course. It would, but it do happen to quite a few fighters, though. It does, I know because this. As you know, Sonny would miss a lot of left tools. Why was he missing? Was it the target? Was it the, yeah, because, the slippery up part of yeah, the body? Yeah, because Clay will pull him back and off a tall, see? So, and, and, so that's why he sold it out. That's how he sold it out. He it, it out. Would not let him that continue. was Dr. Alexander Robbins no, who no, diagnosed no. it, yes. Dr. Uh, Robert Bennett from Detroit. He yeah, and Dr. Bennett also yeah, in the corner. Yeah. Dr. Bennett, who was Sonny's... Uh, uh, personal uh, physician. Right. Yeah. And he that's stopped the, the fight. story there. Oh, now, we're watching Cassius Clay, well, Joe, leave the, the auditorium at this point. I don't want you to leave. Cassius Clay is going down the aisle. The crowd is heading toward his dressing rooms. Harold Conrad, one of the top writers in the nation, uh, also thought that perhaps this would go in a major upset. Harold was writing some publicity, well, and I honestly thought he was just giving us a publicity story. Steve, I must say that they're probably the biggest upset in history of boxing. Well, now look, let me, let me talk about ring upsets, if you don't mind, champ, while we're still looking over at Cassius, talking to other people, uh, foreign broadcasts and so forth. Joe, uh, Jim Braddock beat Max Bear at about 10 to 1 as a 10 to 1 underdog. Uh, then there was another, oh, I don't know, way back, uh, Corbett beat Sullivan. They tell me, although I don't think I was around. Maybe you think I was, but big, big upset. Do you call this one? He entered the ring at about 1 to 7 or 1 to 8 underdog. Would you call this well, the biggest upset, regardless of the odds in I the history think, of the heavyweight division? I think this is the biggest upset for, in the championship division. For, in, championship, for championship fight. fight. For the heavyweight division, I think this is the biggest upset. The biggest because upset. Because uh, I think Lifter probably had been rated by most of the people in America that he would have greatest heavyweight champion of all time. Would have been the heavyweight champion. Good heavyweight champion. Sonny is, is yeah. durable. And Good also, puncher. You're also right. They had rated him that, they, that he probably was, was it so far over the rest of the top of the heavyweights and the, and, and, and who were boxing today. So I think this has got to go down at the biggest upset in the history of boxing. Biggest upset in the history of boxing. Well, I tell you now, as uh, Cassius did say, Angelo Dundee, his trainer, his advisor, also did say that they would go for a return go. Do you feel now the American public should clamor for it? What do you think? Well, I think if, if they have a return match, I think that it would start in the, in the stadium in the world. Because, Any state. Because well, I I just think, let's say that I think that the American public here and also the older world, all the American public. Well, I just world, got the nod. Feel. I, I just got the nod from Ed Last from the World Boxing Association and Arch Heinemann, well, executive secretary. They would okay Steve, the return. Steve, I like, Steve, I like to say we'll play back with you. Joe, great to be with you on Theater Network Television. Ladies and gentlemen, from Miami Beach Convention Hall, on behalf of Joe Lewis and yours truly, Steve Ellis, we saw the biggest upset, as Joe pointed out, in heavyweight history, and we'll just say that's the story from Florida. I've been covering sports for more than 40 years, and in those 40 years, there is no athlete who has been as important, as significant as, as Muhammad Ali. He dominated not only his sport, he dominated all sports. He wanted to know people in the streets. He stopped people. He did magic tricks for them. He talked to them. He kissed babies. And he wasn't running for any office except to be the greatest, which he was. I want to like Rebecca. I really do. But she thinks Miller Lite tastes great because it's smooth. And Rick thinks it's because of the choice hops. And even if we could get past that, we'd still argue over whose work sells the most sports magazines. Okay, in-depth analysis of the nickel defense or fishnet bikinis. You decide. Look, Rebecca. Guys buy sports magazines for great sports writing. Oh, great. So I guess we'll be seeing that Rick Riley sports writing calendar any day now. Oh, man. <laughs> Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. I love lobster. Boiled lobster. Broiled lobster. Jumbo lobster. Baked stuffed lobster. Steamed lobster. Lobster Newberg. Lobster tail. There he goes again. Lobster roll. Sautéed lobster. Did I mention lobster stew? Boils the Cook's Lobster House off the coast of Maine, they'll give you lobster just about any way you want it. But bring your Visa card, because you won't get a bite using American Express. Sir, any suggestions? There's Boil Lobster. Visa, Boil it's everywhere lobster. you want to be. Daddy, Daddy, watch me. Shh. 
Daddy's got a headache. Don't worry, little one. Daddy's got Tylenol for his headache. The most trusted combination of strength and safety in pain relief today. And Tylenol works without stomach irritation. So before you know it... May I have this dance? Daddy's going to be right as rain. Tylenol. Take comfort in our strength. Big Fights Boxing Hour gives you access to the largest boxing library in the world. Here's what you can check out in this library. Rare footage of classic fighters, the stories from outside the ring, and volumes of the greatest action in boxing history. Every week, Al Bernstein puts you ringside for classic fights you can't see anywhere else. Ali, Marciano, Leonard, Lewis, plus hard-hitting fighters every boxing fan ought to know. Big Fights Boxing Hour, Tuesday at 10, only on ESPN Classic. This is ESPN Classic. On ESPN Classic, you can see boxing from A to Z. Everybody stop talking now. Attention. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Let's get it on. Come on. Watch your box. Most unusual of fights, an idol has been born. Joe Lewis scores a devastating knee drop knockout. Rocky Marciano is the heavyweight champion of the world. I upset son in this one, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest of the world. I'm John Dunphy. I don't have to say anything. The picture tells the story. The big to win. Sugar. Tell me, what was the punch that nailed him? Left hook. Patterson Stanton ride on his left hook. The greatest title of all time is for me. It's boxing from Ali to Zale, only on ESPN Classic. Enterprise rent a car for my trip? Looks expensive. It's not expensive, Mom. They pick us up? Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Mom. Well, if it's not expensive, why didn't I get a convertible? Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. What's that? It's a minty Pepsi AC chewable. Chewable? Yeah. They're individually wrapped so I can keep one in my purse. Because you never know when you'll want to stop heartburn before it starts. Got one for me? This vehicle is a lot like an all-weather coat. I mean, you know, a tough one. It's ready for the elements, ready for any situation. But there's a surprise. When you go to put this thing on, oh, that's actually, that's actually pretty smooth. There's fur in here. This is comfortable. That's the experience of looking at a Pathfinder and then getting into it. You're in a whole different world inside, and it's one of comfort and luxury. The hair is big, the tube socks are high, and the action is down and dirty. Can you dig it? All the moves are on ESPN Classic, roller derby style. Ouch. Right on. The forces are good versus some bad. Shut your mouth. So join the pack for a crash course in old school. I'm talking roller superstar. You said Friday and Saturday late nights only on ESPN Classic. Baby, it's Dino Mike. Only ESPN Classic lets you pick what you want to watch Sunday nights. Just log on to ESPN.com on the Go Network and vote for the week's classic click and pick event. 
This week, Click Choice One to see Bernie Perron fend off Bobby Orr's Bruins in the Flyer 74 bid for the Stanley Cup. Click Choice Two to see the birth of a new hockey hero when the Flyers tangle with the Islanders in an overtime thriller. Log on for even more classic Click and Pick choices. Then tune into ESPN Classic next Sunday at seven to see if your pick is the classic Click and Pick of the week. It's only on ESPN Classic. This is ESPN Classic. When I saw Mike Tyson knock out uh, Michael Spinks, June 27, 1988, in Atlantic City, it was the most awesome heavyweight fight I ever saw in my life. Spinks has keep moving because every shot, oh, the cut landed inside. He would have beaten anybody that given night. That's including Joe Lewis, as a Charles, Jack Dempsey, uh, ad nauseum, all of them. Why do I say this? Because I know, I know so. There's something where you attain its uh, heights and you, you just don't do it again. But that night he reached his, his peak. Lewis on his best night could not have beaten Mike Tyson that night, June 27th. When the fight was over, Tyson looked down and said, write that, I'm the best. Write it, I'm the best. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a bow flex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a bow flex machine. You're not going to believe how effective Bowflex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. Yahoo! Giggle Wiggle gives you giga gallons of giggle. <laughs> oh, excuse me, did you say gallons of giggles? <laughs> gallons of giggles. Giggle Wiggle's durable soft foam wigglers. <laughs> Safely wiggle water everywhere. Gallons of giggles. <laughs> Get g -g 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 gallons of giggles. <laughs> Finally, a sprinkler that even the smallest gigglers can enjoy. You must be 18 or older to order. Call the number on your screen to order Giggle Wiggle from the people who brought you the fanoodle. Thanks, Kid Power. Tonight on ESPN Classic, at 7, find out what classic game you voted for on Classic Click and Pick. Then at 9, it's the 1986 U.S. Open on Sunday Drives. Tonight, only on ESPN Classic. You know all those stories you hear about how good it was and how much fun we had and how young we all used to be, about how much it all mattered and how much we all cared and how no one has ever done it higher or faster or harder or better. All those stories you hear, they're all true. This is ESPN Classic. I am Muhammad Ali. I will never be known as Cassius Clay again. Cassius Clay is a slave's name. I'm now a disciple of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm now a black Muslim minister. I am now Muhammad Ali. Ali and I had a falling out only once, and that was in 1964 when he was still Cassius Clay before he fought Sonny Liston for the first time. I knew Malcolm X at the time, and more important, I had a friend whose cousin was Malcolm X's secretary. And through this secretary, I found out that not only were Malcolm X and young Cassius Clay friendly and seeing each other, but Cassius Clay had actually flown up from his training in, in Miami to speak at a Muslim rally in Harlem, and that he was contemplating converting uh, to, the, to the black Muslim movement. And I wrote a story about this in the New York Herald Tribune. It was on the front page revealing that he either had become a Muslim or was about to become a Muslim. And he took offense at this story. And for about six months, he didn't speak to me. Since then, of course, he's never stopped talking. 
Yeah. And I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Now, I told the world, I talk to God every day. If God's with me, can't nobody be against me, Sonny. Liston now signs a rematch with the man who is now known as Muhammad Ali. But Liston just did not take him seriously. However, for the second fight, he realized what he was facing, and he was training very hard for the second fight and got himself in the kind of shape he should have been in when Ali had a hernia. And the fight that had been scheduled was postponed for almost six months. During that period of six months, Liston had not kept up with his training. So that the Liston got in the ring for the second fight, and Lewis in Maine was not the same Liston that would have fought Ali had he not had that hernia in the postponement. May 25, 1965, Ali trained for the rematch amidst rumors of an assassination. Malcolm X had been gunned down in New York, and the champion feared he was next. There's a fear in the white press about the black Muslims, as they call them, or Islam. There's a bigger fear about Liston, because one, he's promoting the fight for his associates, the Nylans. Two, the rumors continue to abound, he's associated with the Mafia. And three, it's so thought that Liston will wipe him out anyway. The first was a fluke that he still is a favorite at nine to five. They finally find a place in Lewiston, Maine, which is so small you can't even find a restaurant worthy of the name. They hold it at St. Dominic's Arena, which is a high school arena used for ice hockey. And here we go for the second fight. They're frisking you on the way in for weapons. You're never quite sure if they're looking for weapons that belong to the white mafia or the black Muslims, but they're almost strip searching you. And you're sitting there waiting. Lewiston, Maine, adopts the heavyweight championship fight banned in Boston. Sonny Liston challenges Cassius Clay on a bright, placid day in May, and for a few hours, the eyes of the sports world focus on this normally quiet northern New England industrial city of 41,000. This is Steve Ellis reporting. It's bigger than bingo in Lewiston and the crowds of the curious gather early outside St. Dominic's Arena's site of the fight. There have been reports of black Muslim threats against the life of Muhammad Ali, as the champion prefers to be known, and the police search all packages, suitcases, and even women's handbags. The arena holds 5,400 when filled, and the best seats sell when they do for $100 apiece. It's hot and humid indoors. The challenger, who claims to be 31 and won the heavyweight title from Floyd Patterson back in 1962 and lost it 15 months ago, is the first to enter the ring. Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, 23, champion, never defeated as an amateur or as a pro.
champion, Jersey Joe Walcott. Going to go with a lot of preliminaries. I know you both know the rules of Maine, so I'm in here to enforce them. So I'll say to you keep your punches up, protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Shake hands, come out fight. Me. The champion says a prayer in his corner. Clay takes the lead at the start. As he did the night he won the title, Clay uses the ring, makes Liston look slow. Liston stalks, tries for the body. 